So if you're watching this video, that probably means that you're a member of the 3D printing community. And if you've not been living under a rock, you might have heard some interesting news about this 3D printer. And that is, it's, well, it's magic. Let me show you. Ta-da! It's gone. What's gone? The dual linear rails are gone. They just uh, magically aren't there. Now, if you don't know what dual linear rails are supposed to look like that are missing where my uh, fingers would normally be colliding with metal, let me show you. These are the dual linear rails right here. They're the big chunky ones. Um, this printer was supposed to come with these, but it didn't. Uh, hence, it's possibly magic or something else is afoot. And that's the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to discover what what's going on here. And one thing I need to disclose before I get started with this video, I'm actually under NDA with um, this company, but it's not for anything that is out right now. I'm working with them on a future project and I've only been under NDA for the last like five days. It's relatively new, but I'm also under NDA for a lot of resin 3D printers, some of them in which you own. Now I get no money for doing this for 3D printing companies. I do it as like a liaison or like a consultant to help them make better products. I do it because I love 3D printing and I really just want to help the community grow and get better and get better and better and better. And that's really important. I wanted to say that because that's the context or I'd say that's the spirit of this video. I'm here to shed light on what's going on in this situation, at least what information I have to share with you. And one last thing, I did buy this printer with my own money, um, so I'm a consumer just like you, so I'm kind of coming at it from that approach as well. In the promotional material and online, it stated that this printer uh, would come with a system like this, and instead it came with something very, very different. This is the KK60 module. It is made in China. It has an accuracy of 0.05 millimeters, which is technically enough. It's acceptable. The load capacity is only five kilograms. It has a decrease speed of maximum of 350 millimeters per minute. Now that's really interesting because we've seen my YouTube channel, I made a short not long ago, that this printer's maximum speed is 350 millimeters per minute, but really you should only run at 300. And so it's really interesting that that, um, my independent research of this while I was working on the review, matches with this information. It's kind of like this reverse trail with two ball bearing points, one on the left, one on the right, where a uh, dual rail system is gonna have like uh, couplers that go around, two of them, and each coupler is gonna have four uh, points where it makes contacts with ball bearing. So it's gonna have eight points of contact. This one has two. This one uses uh, four millimeter ball bearings or they're slightly under four millimeters. And on the other one, the ball bearings are much smaller, like uh, two millimeters, I believe, maybe even smaller. I've spent most of today chatting with Danny Chen, who is the CEO of Uniformation. So first thing, I do want to say thank you, Danny, for taking the time to chat with me all day long, which was all night for him. Uh, it's also Chinese New Year, so a lot of stuff is closed right now. The factory where these were manufactured was is closed, and I'll get back to that later because that's actually kind of an important thing right now as I'm making this video. Now, I had two very pointed questions for him. The first one was, how did this get in here, and why weren't we informed? And I asked him if there was an official response he wanted to tell to the community, uh, let us know what he's thinking about the situation. So let me read that to you and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen as well. Also, I want to, to let you know, my conversation with him is, uh, I have to use a translator because uh, he doesn't speak English. So here's the message from Danny Chen. First of all, I'm very sorry that we have made omissions to our business management, which caused changes in the production and the sale of products without prompt notification to you, causing concern and distress. Um, and I would say, yeah, definitely causing a lot of concern and a lot of distress. As the founder of Uniformation Brand, I have a great responsibility. My team and I will conduct a profound reflection and correction. Regarding the adjustment of the Z-axis module, which is, you know, the, the dual linear rail, I have a few things to tell, or I guess inform you. Again, translation. The reason for the replacement is to reduce the inconsistent printing effect caused by the original design and multiple component assembly errors. Uh, to ensure a consistency of mass production, a more stable integrated module of production was adopted. Now, let me kind of translate that one because I had a lot of conversation. The version, this 1204 version, that's the version that comes with the dual linear rails. That was kind of the pre-production. 1205 is the production version because they had to move to a different factory. They had to move to volume sizes. In order to achieve a more consistent product, the structure of the higher yield rate was replaced. 
Um, in fact, the cost of the version of the 1205 was more than 50% higher than the version of the 1204. And this is because we thought it was a positive replacement. However, there are still some differences. For example, although the old version has two rails, which is only 50 millimeters wide, you know, a piece, but there's two of them. Um, the balls inside, there are the ball bearings are 2.5 millimeters, and the new ver the new version is a 60 millimeter width uh, in total, and the ball bearings are four millimeters. Basically, saying on this one is that he was being told that these are the factors that made it a higher quality product. Now, here's one of those clues that I picked up on. According to what I believe I found online, being the part that was used in here, the load capacity being five kilograms. In a conversation with the CEO, he's saying that the load capacity is 35 kilograms. 35 kilograms should be sufficient for the printer, but if it's true, it's the five. Again, things are not lining up with what he believes he purchased and what might have ended up inside the printer. Was it added in here by the CEO as a cost savings, uh, or was he possibly duped into spending more money on a solution that maybe the factory had? I have a little bit more on that on why I actually do believe that that is the truth and what is going on here. That this is not malicious or a scheme to make more money. And so with that, let's get back to his statement. No matter what the changes were, we failed to be transparent and inform our users in a timely manner, which was our fault. Yes, that was definitely their fault. We'll be very careful with follow-up work and welcome your supervision and correction. And again, I think there's a translation error there. I can assume what he means is um, we'll welcome your input to correct. Our point of departure for the replacement was to provide a more reliable and more consistent offering. So we opted for a more expensive option. Again, he, this was more expensive. I hereby declare that this change is absolutely not intended to reduce costs. We wanted to offer our customers a more cost effective product, but we never wanted to be a brand known for being cheap. Finally, no matter what the future holds, we will continue to strive to do better and provide a more reliable and usable products. We are not doing enough right now and we appreciate your support, understanding and inclusion. And in conclusion, we want to succeed, but we value every recognition and trust, which is the meaning of our efforts to do so. That being his statement, let's talk about some more objective information that I've been able to discover throughout today. Is this thing actually cost more, more money? Now I've asked him for receipts to validate and proof. Right now everything in China is practically closed, but he's gonna try to get that information over to us. Now this information I'm about to provide, it's not concrete because like I said, he's still trying to get a hold of the warehouse. This is what he believes that he can remember. The two rails were about 20 yen. The lead screw was another 20 yen, a total of 40 yen. Um, and the installation components was about another 15, a total of 55. So the original one was 55 yen. From what I understand, this system right here was closer to a hundred yen, which would be almost double the price, which seems a little bit crazy. If that's true, there's a chance that the CEO himself was duped, that he was presented and sold on what he believed was an upgraded system, uh, but it, it's, it appears to not be, again, it appears to not be, I still don't have like 100% concrete evidence that this thing is terrible. Um, we still need to gather that information. But I wanna show you something, something that I found really interesting that I think also leads into maybe he was duped and this was not um, malicious. And that is, I wanna show you the back of this thing. Now this is a really cool design. This tower is mounted to a massive piece of steel welded to the bottom uh, with four huge lag bolts that are torqued on there so tight. I was actually trying to remove it and I, I just kind of gave up. And not only that, but we look back here, there's also a big chunky piece of metal that counterbolts it to the top plate. Let's show you something in comparison. This system is bolted to big long posts that are bolted to the bottom under a much thinner metal. Now it's structurally sound, it's not gonna go anywhere, and it's also bolted to the top plate, and the top plate's big and fat. Um, not as chunky as this one is, I can even feel the difference. I have a hard time believing, and there's a lot more in that printer, this is just one example. As I open up and look at it, there's so many little things that are like well-designed, well-built, well-engineered, heavy, hefty. Personally, I have a hard time believing that someone at the very end would rip out the rails for a cheaper solution to save not even 40 yen and throw their entire brand down the market. Like it doesn't make sense to me. It really does seem more like there might be a lawsuit between Uniformation and the second factory, the one that they hired to do the mass production. Um, seems like they might be the one who caused the delay. Now he's not saying any of this, by the way, like so factory, whatever, don't get mad at him. 
So now that leads us to the conclusion of this video, and that is, what now? And I pushed him on this one a little bit. And where I pushed him is, can you send us out upgraded rail systems? And the answer to that one is maybe. Uh, and the thing on the reason why is he's stating that he believes it would be very difficult to install on our own. I've asked him for a pair for myself. If it's easy, then I'll, or okay, I'll also make a video on how to do it. And I could make that public. And so, you know, maybe with that one, he'll be more accepting to allow people to upgrade the rails themselves. The other option would be uh, you'll send this one back and they'll ship you out a new one which will have the other rail system installed in it and hopefully that resolves any issues you might have. And of course the very last option being if you're just unhappy with it and you're unhappy with the entire situation and you want to be done with it, uh, you can reach out to them and work out for a refund. They will honor that agreement. So from here, I think what I need to do is more A-B testing to see whether or not this really is as much of an issue as I believe it is. It's going to take a while to get the rails to do that, but when I get them, I'll definitely post that information. It's just, it's going to be a while. And I am really curious to hear your opinion about what you think is going on here. Do you think there was some cost-saving measures made by Uniformation, or do you think maybe there's something funny going on with the factory, or do you think... It's a misunderstanding. It's just a new technology. We are not familiar with it. We're not used to it and we're afraid of it. And really the issue here is we didn't get better um, transparency about what was going on. I'd be really love to know your opinion on the topic down below, why you feel that way, or if you have any suggestions that I could pass on to Uniformation to try to make sure that we can get a positive solution. I do believe in the end, we all just want a really great working 3D printer, and we all just want to get back to 3D printing and doing what we love and enjoy. And with that, uh, thank you for watching, and have a good day. So here's some not so sciencey science. As I get to the top of this, it's really, really hard to pull up. Like, really, really hard. If I push down here, closer to the spring system, I get a decent movement. If I apply pressure here, it's a lot smoother to go down. And I'm probably burning the motor out right now. And if I hold it here and, you know, pull up on it, put some weight on there. It's kind of catchy and really difficult. If I do it back here, it's way easier. Still some catchiness, but not bad. And pushing down, pretty smooth. I'm not pushing too hard, put a little bit of weight on it. Do it from here. It's a lot, it's like stops and catches, stops and catches, stops and catches. So there's definitely some binding going on here um, with my not-so-scientific science experiment, but just another piece to add to the puzzle.